Hi there, I'm Shay Thompson and welcome to the eSail GP Invitational, bringing you the fastest racing class in sailing to the wonderful world of gaming. It's fast, it's furious and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Let's have a look and see what we've got in store for you. And we are, oh, boats are lining up. Who's going to get a penalty? Who's going to get the best start? And we're off. I think as any competitor, you just got to keep a cool mindset and you know, the race isn't over until it's over. That was very, very disrespectful. But we have to look ahead to the race leaders and he is going to be doing a victory lap to the finish. You know, we sometimes we have to take those risks to get the win. So that's just a taste of what's to come. To guide us through the action, we've got Leo Takahashi, who is the flight controller for the Japan Sail GP team and is hoping to take the Tokyo Olympics by storm. Leo, so you've played and commentated this game before. How much fun is it? Yes, well, we can expect a lot of uh, high drama. Obviously, the, these guys have been playing this game for a long time now. Uh, so you know, all, all the guys are at a very high level. So you know, the, when, it, when there's high level guys doing uh, some close racing, we're going to expect lots of drama and some uh, upsets, I think. Brilliant stuff. And joining Leo is Canadian sailor Sarah Douglas, who's hoping to follow up her gold medal at the Pan American Games with some more success at the Olympics. So Sarah, tell us a little bit about your lockdown series. Well, like everyone else, I kind of went through a lockdown and kind of got on the water. So I thought, why not virtually sail? And my friends and I got together uh, once or twice a week and had a whole lockdown series, you know, getting together for some prowls and just having a blast and sailing. Awesome stuff. So now that we've met your commentators, it's almost time for the first of the fleet races. But if this is your first time watching eSail DP, here's what you can expect when the action begins. Welcome to the virtual world of the fastest sailboat racing series on the planet, eSail GP. The game replicates the exhilarating Sail GP series where F50 catamarans are raced by teams from around the world, reaching speeds of 50 knots and that's about 100 kilometers an hour. The drama begins even before the start of a countdown marks the moment the sailors can cross the start line. They can build up their speed, but if a boat crosses the line before the countdown hits zero, they have to return to the starting line and lose valuable time. From the start, it's straight out to the reach mark before heading down to the bottom gate, then the long run upwind to the top gate. They repeat the loop once more before the charge down to the finish. The players will be constantly monitoring the wind speed and direction, but watch out for them also looking out for patches of darker water. The whole fleet battle it out in three races, with 10 points for the winner, 9 for the second, and so on. The two players with the most points will go through to the match race. The higher your score, the better you're doing. If players are tied on points after three races, places are decided on the rankings of the third fleet race. The match race is a winner-takes-all final. Cross the line first and you're the champion. If you'd like to play the game yourself, you can. All you have to do is head on over to the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store and search Virtual Regatta Inshore and very soon you'll be skippering your own EF50. Okay, now it's time for the action to begin. Our players are ready and it's time for the first of the fleet races. Leo and Sarah, I'm handing it over to you. Thank you, Shay. Welcome everyone to race one of the series. We're here with Bacchus Brandt from Finland. And oh, I'm excited for this racing to begin. We've got some great names here and we're gonna see some exciting racing. What are we gonna be seeing? What's, see, you've played this game before in the F50, Sierra. What, what's, what wins and what loses this game? Well, Leo, it all comes down to no mistakes being made, just like regular sailing. Uh, the athletes have to be very uh, on their game to ensure that they are just making the least amount of mistakes, going fast around the course and making the right decisions uh, on, on the uh, course there, Leo. 100%. A few familiar names on screen here. We've got Deja Vu, who's the current um, e-sailing world champion. And a few familiar other names, Bart Lambrix, Khan Mazlunka, Roxy Joni, and a few new names, Farley, Norzet, Lars Affair, Bacchus Brandt. So it'll be interesting to see how they go against the, the current guys and then the new guys. So you know, I, I can't wait for this race to get started. As we enter the start line, and it's going to be an epic first race. It's going to be all about who's going to draw first blood here and who is going to get a penalty or drop down the leaderboard. So 30 seconds to go. The breeze is still light. 
and it's going to be interesting. Two Team Japan boats repping the Team Japan and a Spanish boat all lined up now. 20 seconds to go. Kamas Lonka gets rid of his penalty. Yellow boat back as Brands is ripping there. 14 seconds to go. And we are off. 10 seconds to go. The boats are lining up. Who's going to get a penalty? Who's going to get the best start? Looks like the boats are slightly further back. And we're off. Back is France's early penalty. And Khan Mazlunka on screen with the best start. Sarah, talk us through that one. Khan Mazlunka was a long way back. What? He must have done a good timing there. He must have been just a bit nervous of getting that ball start. I'm not quite sure what happened. But it was quite an exciting start as they come down. They bound that first mark and they're heading down towards the gate. Um, and they've got to be careful of these boundaries. Leo, when you're racing, how much does that boundary play into effect in your strategy? In the last few years, they've been trying to adopt some stadium sailing. And with these F50s, it's all about reducing your maneuvers because that you lose so much speed. So as you saw there, Norzet on screen, he, uh, he went into that tack at 30 knots and he almost lost 10 knots of boat speed. So that's what, 100 meters or so? So that was massive. So. Going out to those boundaries reduces your maneuvers, meaning that you are going to go faster around the course. As we follow uh, Karmas Lunka, he's in, he's in the current lead. Bacchus Brandt in the bright yellow boat on screen, 27.5 knots at 46 true. Uh, looks like Karmas Lunka's tacked out of the right-hand side. All the boats out on this right-hand side. What does that mean, Sarah? It means that what, the right side could be paying off? Yeah, absolutely. They're probably looking for a little bit more uh, pressure or uh, shift is the reason to go to one side. And it seems like all the competitors have the same idea there, Leo. We're on the screen with Deja Vu Sailing, who is the current world champion. And he's currently in second place, knocking on the door of Karma's Lunka. So it'll be uh, pretty interesting to see if he can uh, close that gap and try to take the lead off him. But for now, Karmas Lunka has a pretty handy lead at the second, first top mark. With Deja Vu following close behind, looking to close that gap, uh, the Brit is just cruising at the moment, trying to, to get closer to his competitor. Right behind him, we've got Norzit, LDN, and Roxy Joni from uh, Germany. A few familiar names. Bart Lambrick's right behind from the Netherlands. He's uh, current, actually a 49er sailor. He's been uh, selected for the 2020 Olympics as well for the, for the Dutch team, which is pretty cool. The first, first uh, Dutch 49er to be selected, which is um, you know, a pretty good achievement. And we've got Bacchus Brantz in the yellow fin boat and Lyric, from, Lyric, the two Frenchmen, a little bit further down below the pack. So they'll be wanting to get a few places above. We've got Karmas Lunka, pretty comfortable now. He's got a 120 meter lead on Deja Vu. So, you know, if I was him, what would you be doing? If you were him, Sarah, what would you be doing? I'd just be keeping ahead of my other competitors. Uh, if I was Khan, you know, as you can see on the screen, he's heading over to that right hand side, keeping into that, getting into that more pressure. Uh, he's going 27 knots at the moment and just trying to go, keep going fast and ahead of your competitors, but you can't forget about them. So you got to keep your eye on them, Leo. It looks like the screen has gotten a little bit darker on the course, a little bit, uh, a little more shades of gray. What does that mean? It means more breeze on that right-hand side of the course. That's why all the competitors, all the e-sailers are heading out to that right-hand side to get an advantage. But as you look on the screen here, Deja Vu has closed the gap to only 50 meters now. So the current world champion is pushing Karmas Lunka pretty, pretty, pretty hard, isn't he? Oh, we yes, got a tight cross. Karmas Lunka just gets across. That was a close one. As they come Karma. around this top mark, they are just neck and neck with just a 50 or 80, 80 meters between and really close between these top three guys as they come around and going downwind Ooh. towards the bottom mark. And that's the, the kind of the risks you have to take when you're sailing right with Karmas Lunka. He needed to cross deja vu there to get the win and and um he, he went for it and it, it trans translates to similar sailing on what we do here i guess you know we sometimes we have to take those risks to get the win good on Karl Mazlunka for taking it on like a champ and he gets rewarded by winning the first race we look at the rankings here Karl Mazlunka dominating first race with deja vu the current world champion in second place roxy joni in third 
but Lambrix in fourth, Nozit in fifth, Fale in sixth, who's uh, representing Brunei in this series, which is pretty interesting, and Bacchus Brantz from Finland, the bright yellow boat, Lyric from France, and ninth place is Large de Fair in ninth place. Sarah, run us through the general stats, would you? We saw that Bart had the first start, but it really came down to the fastest average speed, which was Khan, who was our race winner. He really showed with 32.4 knots as his average speed. That is fantastic for such light wind conditions we had today for race one. Good job on Farley for sailing the shortest distance sailed. That is really important, but Look at the bottom for Khan. He picked up 17 penalties. That is quite impressive for a race winner to pick up 17 penalties, Leo. And let's take a look at the leg chart. Yeah, well, 17 penalties is quite a lot for a guy that wins the race, but I think those came from the uh, the boundary penalties at the start. So Khan Mazlinka trying to throw us off a little bit. Uh, so as we see the race legs chart, you can see Bart Lambrix with the cracking start off the the, the Bohan side of the start line, taking the early lead, but it was all Khan Mazluka after that. He uh, he led from the reach mark all the way around, so you see the the orange line there, Khan Mazluka taking the lead. Deja Vu being so consistent, staying from second all the way throughout the race, but the most biggest one is the Bacchus Brantz. He, he was last off the line, and um, he climbed himself up the sixth for one moment, and then uh, unfortunately dropped the seventh, but you know, he did very well to come back from the last spot. I know how hard it is. Um, but yeah, for now, that's, that's all the race leagues chart. I'm looking forward to race two and seeing more closer racing. And what a win for Khan Muslimka. Congratulations. Leo and Sarah, how did you find that first fleet race? Yeah, so it seemed to me that Khan had a very good start from the left-hand side of the, the start line. Uh, he held the best average speed, as we saw in the stats that uh, Sarah ran through. And, it's, and for me, all I can say is that the fastest boat around the course wins the race. And yeah, what about you, Sarah? From your experience um, with, the, with your laser sailing, the start is so important, but you know, what makes the, the race leader? Just being fast around the course, like you said, and holding on. So he got kind of his heels bitten out a bit by his other competitors and it got really close, but you know, staying ahead and keeping a cool head uh, in that whole process really sealed the deal for him. Wonderful stuff, and what a great opening to our regatta. Whether or not you're new to ESL GP or looking for a few pointers to improve your own gaming, here's 2020 ESL GP champion Deja Vu with a few pointers for you. Hi, I'm Michael Donovan. I'm the 2020 ESL GP champion, and this is my guide on how to play this great game. Even before the race gets underway, watch out for your competitors looking for the best position on the start line. They'll use the countdown to improve their starting position, and if that gets in the way of you or any of the other competitors, then all the better. The trick is to make your move without gaining a penalty and still having really good speed and good timing on the line for when the start gun goes off. Keeping an eye on the strength and direction of the wind is as vital in the virtual F50 as it is in the real one. The wind indicator is always on your screen, and if you read it right, it gives you a great chance of overtaking your competitors. Also, keep looking out for darker patches of water on the screen. The darker the patches of the water, the higher the wind, and so the faster you'll go and more gains you'll make on your competitors. Often the last thing you want to do is do too many turns, as the most direct run with the least amount of attacks and jibes is often the quickest way around the course. And when you do have to do a turn, attack or a jibe, watch out for other boats before you do it, and for especially the turning marks, as if you hit them, you'll get a penalty, you'll get slowed down, and it will ruin your chances of moving forward in the fleet. And when you're around the last mark, heading for home on the final reach of the course, point as true as you can to the line for a flat out race to the finish. If you point a bit lower, you'll get more speed on the reach, but be careful about the boats coming in behind and trying to roll over the top of you. What you're looking for from a good start is to get off the line as fast as possible and also as close after the start gun as possible. This makes the optimum starting position as far back in the start box as you can for a long run up. And the long run up allows for two things, maximum speed when you cross the start line and also lots of time and distance to adjust your timing to the line if you're slightly early or slightly late so that you're not over the line as that will incur a big penalty as you have to wait for the entire fleet to pass you before that penalty is released and you can go sailing at full speed again. Right now, let's see who can put those pointers into practice. Leo and Sarah, it's time for the second of the fleet races. Over to you. All the uh, gamers have warmed up now, so they're going to be pushing pretty hard, I think. I think we're going to see a little more penalties and uh, we're going to see boats 
um, being very aggressive on the starting line, I think. But uh, it's all going to come down to what we saw in the last one, the best start and the, 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 the gamer that's going to be able to keep the lead all the way around the course is going to take the take the win. Um, you know, we're seeing similar wins here, Sarah. Like, it's, it looks a little light still. I don't know. I'm pretty keen to see some uh, heavy wins soon. 20 seconds to go. All the boats are lined up. We've got a good view of all the fleet from the, the committee boat here. Roxy Joni picks up a penalty. That's going to be no good for him. Khan Mazlunka right in the middle. He's just prowling to see where he can start. Looks like the boat's a little bit late. And we go off to the start. Greenboat with some pace. Who is that? Looks like Farley with the best start coming off the boat. He had so much speed there. Bart Lambrick's in second place, I think, the Team Japan boat. Oh, are we going to see a few penalties? No, we're clear. Wow, Sarah, that, wow, that for a start. That's quite the start and quite the mark rounding, actually, with quite a bit of boat picking up a penalty at that first mark. And it is very congested as they come around to this gate mark. And coming up when uh, these sailors are getting really hungry about what they're going to be do, doing. Uh, Leo, as we look up wind here and look at the pressure, what do you think these sailors are looking at? Uh, they're going to be looking for the, uh, the darker spots on the race course, but you know, it's, it's a little bit hard if you're in the, in the back of the fleet to be able to do what you want. So we've got Bart Lambrex in the lead in the bright blue boat. Um, he had an epic start. His 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 time judgment to the start line was that was awesome. You can't get any better than that or any closer. As we look at the the rest of the pack, we've got uh, Karma's Lonka having a pretty solid another race, and then we've got um, looks like Roxy Joni and Farley very close in that top four. We saw uh, Deja Vu getting a penalty on that downwind and so that's knocked him down a little bit so that he would um what are you expecting sir if you're the, the current world champion and you get a penalty on the first downwind what is your mentality what, what are you going to be trying to do there i think as any competitor you just got to keep a cool mindset and you know the race isn't over until it's over as we know so i'm sure deja vu is going to be fighting and getting every little bit of boat speed and and distance on its competitors but you know what it's about consistency, and I'm sure that sailor is going to climb back up and uh, get some ground on his other competitors, Leo. Consistency is key, especially in sailing. That's the one. So we have Bart Lambrix led around the first top mark. He's got a pretty handy lead over Farley, who's uh, representing Brunei this this uh, regatta, which is pretty awesome to see. And we've got Bacchus Brant, who is in third place, and the winner of Nkarma's Lunka from Turkey in third place and we have the middle pack the middle to back pack it's all tight we got Roxy Joni Lyric Deja Vu Nozet they're all close and we're going to see some tight mark roundings here let's see how close they can get to the bottom mark these guys are just so good at this game honestly I, if I was playing I'd be hitting that bottom mark at speed so full credit to these gamers for absolutely just ripping these boats around the course Sarah, you had a little bit of experience playing this game, and we just saw Bar Lambrex miss the boundary there. Just that's 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 a good gain, isn't it? Missing that boundary like that. Yeah, they have a lot of skill, a lot more than what I would in controlling these boats. Um, as I'm sure you, you of course, have way more experience in controlling of the boat. It's a bit different than a laser, but uh, these gamers and competitors are just doing a great job of uh, staying in control and going fast while they do it, Leo. These guys have a few hours playing this game due to uh, lockdown and COVID-19. However, they are showing us that they are the best gamers in the world. And Bar Lambrex, he's got a pretty sizey lead now, 80 metres. He, if I was him, I'd be able to have a little bit of um, confidence to just knock back a little bit and not um, be too tense. Bart Lambrex does his last tack going to the mark. We're uh, looking at Deja Vu here. He's on the port ley line. He's going real slow. And you see Bart Lambrex, what a bright... Um, what is that a lime, lime kind of baby blue color? It's a beautiful color. It looks like it. it. It definitely stands out. And we know who Bart Lambrex is. 
Deja Vu with a very close rounding. He is going to be wanting to pick up as many places as he can just to be able to stay in touch with that top two. And he does. He, he picked up the fourth place. I think he was around seventh at the bottom mark. So um, good, good, good job for him. And we see Fale and Roxy Joni, the two Team Japan boats rounding. I've got a look. I might not cheer for these two here because uh, they're representing my team. Deja Vu, fourth place. He did very well to come back there. And a big story here is Karmas Lunka, who won the first race, is in the ninth. He is in last. As we see the rankings, the, the second race of this qualifier series, the gamers putting on an impressive show. Bart Lambricks takes the honors with first place. Fale in second, representing Brunei. Roxy Joni, our world champion, Deja Vu Sailing. He was doing very well badly but he picked up to fourth place which he'll be very happy about. Norza from Spain in fifth, Lyric and the Large Affair. These guys are inseparable aren't they? They can't, they, they're either finishing right next to each other or they're not, you know. So Bacchus Brands from Finland in eighth and the guy that won race one, Karmas Lunka, was in last place. Sarah, run us through the statistics, would you? Thanks, Leo. Um, you know, Bart Lambrix, the race winner with the best average speed and best max speed. His max speed was 49.6 knots, which is quite impressive. But the shortest distance sale comes to our second place competitor, uh, Farley, did a great job. And, you know, it actually picked up to 25 knots, which was the max wind speed for Bracus Branton from Finland. And, uh, you know, quite an interesting race too. And let's run through the leg charts, Leo. And we had to see here the legs chart. Lars Defer was an epic start, but he dropped like a rock straight after that one. He fell straight down the leaderboard and finished in seventh. Farley being, staying very consistent all the way around the race course, which is which is hard to do in this game if you, um, it, but uh, Bart Lambricks going from third to first and maintaining that all around the course. but. An interesting one here is Karmas Lunka. He was fifth around the reach mark and then picked up the third, but then something must have happened. He must have got a penalty because he dropped all the way to ninth place. That is going to cost him for this regatta. Um, but, but yeah, apart from that, we saw an epic race there. Good show down top gamers. And um, right now we can see the, the points. Uh, Bart Lambrick's in the lead. He got a second in the first race and a first in the second race. So. Um, for him, he's got a pretty sizey lead, 17 points in total. Roxy Joni, 16, and then the, the rest of the pack is so close. 16, 16, 14, 12, 12, and 8. So it's anyone's game here. It's all going to be about who performs in race 3. And yeah, it's all going to come down to this one. Congratulations to Bart, who didn't even leave his competitors with a chance to win. Leo and Sarah, what is the key for such a dominant victory? Well, Shay, it comes down to best speed, max speed, and, you know, Bart just really dominated and did a great job that race. Yeah, it looks like he um, made a big jump on, on, the, on, the, on the first downwind because the, the guys behind him picked up a few penalties, so he was able to have a little jump uh, at the bottom mark. And from then on, just being a, a great gamer as he is, he, is, he was able to pick the, the wind shifts and sail the boat fast and stay in front of his competitors. and. When you can do that very well, uh, you're going to hold on to your lead. So congrats to Bart, and uh, he's currently leading the the, the overall standing. So it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see if he's going to hold on to that in this last race. So next year, we'll be launching a brand new behind the scenes series called Racing on the Edge, giving you a closer look at all the rivalries, technology and drama that goes on behind closed doors. Here's a quick look at what's to come. This is the threat of death on these boats. When you're going 50 knots, the water's like concrete. If you crash, it would essentially disintegrate. Slingers on the wheel, selling veterans. There's going to be a lot of rivalries. I mean, none of these guys want to get beaten. They're all super competitive. I don't know what's happening, but I can't, I can't keep up anymore. We're all competitors. We all want to win. But at the same time, if you have a collision with these boats, it can be catastrophic. There was a big, big collision there. And the competition within CLGP is unbelievably high. You need to be able to deal with every situation. Every race in CLGP is pretty critical. It's, it's sailor versus sailor. Getting right 
right on that edge of going as fast as you can and not crashing. Time now for the third and final fleet race. Leo and Sarah, it's all yours. Thanks, Shay. Welcome everyone to race number three. We saw an awesome first first two races with the points being so close as you saw in the rankings now. Uh, Bart Lambrex holding a slender lead over Roxy Joni and then on the points are just so tight that, you know, pretty much if anyone wins this race and the points work out as it is, we're going to see some new guys in the top two. I don't want to ask this question, but who would you who would you bet on to make the match race here? You know, Leo, I, I, typically I would go with the history and I think that's deja vu. I mean, he proved it in that second race today where he was back in eighth and he climbed all the way back to fourth. Um, so you always just can't get out the champion there. But it also comes down to points, and Bart and Rocky Zoni are just neck and neck, so it's going to be quite an interesting race, Leo. All these competitors are incredibly talented and, uh, you know, they're best at what they do. So it's going to be a tight start. Uh, like the last race, we saw a lot of penalties at the start, so that's going to come into play here and, and not picking up a penalty and going fast across that starting line, and that's going to be a big factor in today's race. We see uh, Bart Lambricks in the, the bright line boat and Khan uh, Mislunka in the orange real close before, or maybe a little bit of match racing before match race begins, but we see 10 seconds to go. The boats are accelerating. And we're going to see who is going to get this awesome start. We see the lime green boat very close. The Frenchman getting close. And a Team Japan boat very fast the line. Oh, and we see Karma's Lunker at the middle of the start line. Absolutely nails it. And he is going to be first to this reach mark. Karma's Lunker, the winner of race one. And my personal favorite goes around the mark in first place. We see a little congestion in the middle. Bart Lambricks didn't come off too badly in that one. He had a good start. And Deja Vu is right in there as well. So no penalties as of yet. It was a very clean start, Sarah. What are we going to see from now on? Well, as they come towards this bottom mark, it's quite a bit of congestion and the competitors will be splitting up. Oh, and a couple penalties being picked up as they round this mark. Um, coming up when, Leo, what are the competitors looking for? Well, they're going to be looking for the shifts, right? And then it's always going to be in the first bottom mark. You want to have a clear lane. Um, you can see on the screen there that there's a, there's a little lighter patch where the boats are directly behind a boat. And that's that means uh, it's called wing wash, really, is what we call it. Um, if you don't, you don't as a, as, a sail, as a gamer in this game, you don't want to be, you don't want to put your boat in this light patch behind someone's boat because it means that you're going to have less wind speed than the boat that you're sitting behind. So uh, for these guys around the first bottom mark, it's all about having a clear lane and getting no wing wash. Backus Brands tacks right on Large Affair, and that was very, very disrespectful. We look further up the course, we see Muslunka from Turkey in the lead, and um, we see on the screen here, Norzit on the right hand line of the ley line. Bart Lambrex is going to tack right in front of his face, and as you can see there, a little bit of wing wash washes over Norzit, so he's going to have less wind speed. Now, Sarah, if you're Bart Lambrex here, you see Karl Mazlunka in the lead. How are you going to try to get past him, you think? Well, just like you've been talking about, uh, you know, trying to take his wind on this downward leg, um, which, oh, he decides to jive that to split from his competitor. So he's looking for that extra distance to gain from on con. So uh, it's going to be an interesting race uh, and quite a mix up, too, with these competitors on this downward leg, Leo. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, though, Sarah. It's, you know, like, um, F50s, there's not much wing wash downwind, is there? Because you know, of the apparent wind speeds, you know, uh, you can't really pass a boat uh, from behind anymore as easily as you could in, say, what, Laser or a 420 with the, with the apparent wind is real far back. So um, it's a little bit harder to pass um, boats from behind in the F50. But, you know, I've seen it happen before, and you can't count it out. As we see the bottom mark rounding, Lyric tacks straight away in his black, quite fearsome boat. Uh, colors there. Deja Vu is really struggling behind this race. He's in fifth place, and if he wants to make this match race final, he really has to uh, pick up his places here. We got Nozit going 26.3 knots in his Spanish boat. 
covering the fleet on starboard. And we see at the right of the screen, Bart Lambrex is on port. Well ahead. Karma's Lunker and Bart Lambrex almost 100 metres in front of the next, the third place boat, which is quite significant. Um, but Sierra, it almost seems like Bart Lambrex has closed it up a little bit up there. He is hunting down his competitor. He is hunting down Khan. And uh, it's going to be quite interesting as we come down wind uh, and towards the finish. Uh, I'm sure Bart Lambrex is just biting down on his heels, Leo. There you go. There's the graphic there. Bart Lambrex going 25 knots. You can see the speed differences because Bart is in Karma's Lunker's wing wash. You see Karma's Lunker is going 28 knots with Bart Lambrex with going 26 knots. So it's two knots faster for Karma's Lunker. So if that you know if that shows how much disturbance there is in the breeze, it's massive. Lyric goes around the right hand side, jibes straight away, and we got Norzit on the right hand side on starboard as well. It's going to be a very close finish between these guys, but we have to look ahead to the race leaders. Karma's Lunker rounds the last reach mark, and he is going to be doing a victory lap to the the finish. Bart Lambrex rounds in second. It almost seems like these two are going to cement their tickets to the final race. Lyric, the Frenchman, pulling away from the other French Frenchman. He's in the ninth. He's going to be happy with his third place. Nozit, representing Spain. Look, they have a solid fourth place there. With Bacchus Brantz from Finland. He's going to take away the fifth place prize. Roxy Joni, he was second coming into this final race, and he just let us slip there. He's going to be finishing in sixth. And Deja Vu who uh, just struggled struggled in the second and third races, finishes in seventh there. So Karma's Lunka and Bart Lambrix, uh, if my maths is correct, they're going to be in the match race. Uh, Lyric from France in third place, finally separated away from his French counterpart. Uh, Norzit in fourth, Bacchus France from Finland in fifth place. Roxy Joni, who was uh, so close to making that match race, is in sixth place. And Deja Vu, who who won the East Sailing World Championship, just couldn't find the rhythm he had at that regatta. Um, Sarah, run us through the stats, please. Thanks, Leo. So we saw best start came down to Farley, but it didn't quite translate into the race, unfortunately for him. But our race runner had the best average speed of 31.4 knots, uh, which was quite great. But max speed came to 48.6 knots held by Bart, um, which Quite impressive. So that's race winner with the best average speed and the number two is the best max speed. Uh, Deja Vu put a lot of jives in, which is quite interesting. Uh, and it didn't quite work out well for him finishing seventh place. Leo, how about we run through the race chart? Yeah, we sure can. Look at the margin of BC Fale. He was so close to the start line at 0.3 of a second. So that's some great. Um, intuition there. We see uh, Karma's Lunka, the race winner, he went from second at the, the start to holding it all the way to the finish line. Bart Lambrick struggled a little bit in the first few legs, but uh, he pulled through in the third third leg, third top mark, and um, came second all the way to the finish. Um, an interesting one is Lyric. Uh, he was at the bottom of the, the pack, at the eighth place in, in, on leg two, and from then on, he just made big jumps up with the track to finishing third so you know that's a, that's if i was him it'd be, it's a good way of ending the event even if you didn't make the match race you know you're only as good as your last race and if, you, if i was like lyric i'd be pretty happy with that um yeah so awesome race it was so close and i'm sure the spectators have loved every minute of that race so um at the end of the day here are the points we have bart lambrix and karnamas lunka in the match race final uh, Bart Lambrex with a 26 point total and Kamazunka 22. Big bit of a lead, but you know, if I was Kamazunka, I'd be pretty happy with just sneaking in there over Roxy Joni, 21 points, Deja Vu 20, Nozat with 19, Farley 17, Lyric 16, Bacchus Brandt 13, and Large Affair holding the fort down at the end with 8 points. So some close points totals, and I can't wait for this match race. These two are going to be so good and they're going to be battling it out sarah the can was longer you pulled through really exciting race there khan comes back from a difficult second fleet race 
to then win the third one and clinch a top two spot next to Bart. Leo and Sarah, from the commentator's seat, how did that final fleet race go? Well, today it comes down to the best speed and coming off the line well. And I mean, it really came down with Khan. He just held on to his lead the entire time. And so great job by him. Um, it's going to be quite a interesting race or final race. Isn't it going to be Leo? Yeah, so I uh, can't stress it enough. Uh, speed wins sailing races. And from there, Khan Mazlonka just uh, gave us a clinic there. He had the best start and he held such a good speed all around the racetrack. Even with Bart Lambricks, who's a great gamer, nipping at his heels, Khan Mazlonka just said, no, this is my race, this is my ticket to the final, and I'm going to take this one home with me. Uh, look, uh, Shay, I can't wait to hear what these guys uh, had to say about that race. Okay, not long now until the final match race, but first, let's see how our top two are shaping up. Bart Khan, congratulations for making it to the final two. Khan, how are you feeling after dominating the first and third fleet races? Well, I'm feeling amazed. Uh, my first and third races were quite well. Uh, I did a good start in both of the races, but in the second race, um, I didn't uh, do a good start. At the last race, I just, uh, I, I had nothing to lose. So uh, fortunately, I managed to start in a good position and I managed to finish in the first position. Wonderful. And Bart, did you come in with any expectations to make it to the final match race? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't have much expectations going in here. I was actually, uh, I forgot about this uh, <laughs> event tonight, but uh, luckily uh, another sailor uh, reminded me of it. Um, so uh, yeah, didn't have much expectations. <laughs> Oh man, like I love your totally chill attitude. Like you came in here with such a cool head and I mean, clearly it worked for you. So again, congratulations. And Khan, like, are you feeling confident about the final match race? Well, uh, Bart is a very tough competitor and I raced with him last year in Bermuda. Uh, I know him and he's, a, he's an Olympic uh, racer for, in 49ers, so I respect him a lot. And I think it's going to be a tough one, and I, I hope Bart will go easy on me, <laughs> but it will, it will be fun. Awesome. And Bart, considering your cool attitude, are you confident about winning the final match race? Uh, yeah, we'll see. I think it will be a good battle, and I hope uh, Khan will go easy on me. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And now we are ready for the final match race. For the last time, Leo and Sarah, I'm handing it over to you. Thanks, Shay. And we are here in the match race. Khan Muslunka versus Bart Lambricks. Turkey versus the Dutch. And wow, it's going to be a hell of a race. We have two great gamers here who have been at the top of their game for almost so long now. Bart Lambricks uh, was at the World Championship last year. Uh, there were no F50s in that regatta, but it doesn't matter. He still has picked it up. And Khan Muslunka, he, like I said before, I bet on him. He's always been there or thereabouts, and this is his time to shine, I think. And I can feel it in my bones that he is going to pull this one out of the bag. Uh, Sarah, I want to hear what you have to say. Who's going to take this one out? You can't pick my boy Khan, so you have to be Team Bart for this one, unfortunately. But what are, you, what, what are your picks? What are you thinking? You know what? I'm rooting for all competitors here. Uh, I don't like to pick favorites. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm rooting for both of the competitors uh, in this final match race. It's going to be quite interesting because it is different tactics. You know, before it was, what, 9, 11 competitors racing together in a fleet race. Now it is a match race. It is a one-on-one -on -one race. It is mano y mano. Uh, you know, it's going to come down to just who crosses that line ahead of each other. and. Leo, um, when it comes to match racing, what kind of strategies are these competitors going to be looking at? Yes, it's going to be a complete different game here. It's not fleet racing anymore, it is match racing. It's 1v1, all or nothing. There's going to be no other boats to worry about except for that other dude on the race course. And I just want to say, sir, you're a great advocate of the, advocate of the sport. I, I like that, that you're just, you're, you're all about sailing now. You're all, you just want to see a good race. Uh, we have 45 seconds to go. Uh, a little bit more breeze, Sarah. It looks like the, the water is a little bit darker, so that's going to make for some more exciting racing, isn't it? Yes, it will, and the competitors are already kind of getting really close and kind of playing in, well, 
aggressively coming at each other at times. Um, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that as they come towards the start line, Leo. 20 seconds to go. We have Bar Lambricks in the light blue boat, Karma's Lunker in the orange and grey. And we're going to see them a little bit of fishtailing going on, trying to jostle for an uh, advantage going here. And Karma's Lunker gets that lowered spot. Five seconds to go. And it looks like Karma's Lunker has got the control. One second to go. And Karma's Lunker, he takes it. What a great start. Bass was just, he was too close to the start line, so he had to do a little up, and Karl Mislinka took advantage of that and holds a 50-meter lead at the first reach mark. Sarah, how was that for a start? Karl Mislinka just nailed it, didn't he? Absolutely. It is so close right now um, at the start, and it continues. You know, just 30 meters. Oh, and just the competitors are getting really close, fighting it out. Um, as they come towards this gate mark and where they do a split, which is quite interesting, where Khan tacks to protect Bart Lambrex uh, as they head up this race course, Leo. As you can see, the lead changes is changing every time they do a maneuver. And we see Khan Mazlunka holding a slender lead. And we're going to see a face tack by Khan Mazlunka. How close is this? Bart Lambrex has to be forced to tack out. Karma Zonka doing a very good job of controlling his opponent. And we see a little 50 meter lead in the analysis there. Bart Lambricks ripping along. He's probably going about 28 knots. And there's a light, light uh, line boat. You can see. Sarah, if you were Bart now, what would you be doing? You'd be tacking, getting that starboard advantage. Leo, it is so close, and with those kind of tacks and uh, moves, I mean, how frustrated do you get as a competitor when you just get, like, like you said, get tacked on on your face? Yeah, well, I'd, being a match racer, it's happened so many times before, you kind of get used to it, but the most frustrating time is when, when someone that does it repeatedly, especially in a fleet race, as uh, we've got to see something interesting here, Bart Lambricks has taken the lead over Karl Mazlunka. He, he dipped him before and just sailed through the lead of him. And Bart Lambricks has taken the first lead at the top mark. And we're going to see another split here at the, the top mark. Bart Lambricks drives straight away and Karl Mazlunka is left going, what just happened? It is incredibly close on this downwind. Like the competitors are just fighting. You can kind of see it, an aerial view right now as they rip down the course, um, going really fast towards that bottom mark wheel. Calm as look at. He's going to be uh, licking his lips here because he's going to split here at the bottom mark. Bart Lambrex is going to have to decide how he's going to protect his lead. There's only 25 meters in it. Calm as Lunka does a jive, and we're going to see. Oh, no, he's going to follow Bart Lambrex and go all the way out to the boundary. Bart Lambrick's 30 meter lead. He's going to be deciding how to protect this. Sarah, if you're going for this bottom mark, top mark, sorry, which side would you go for? Well, I think it comes down to pressure. Um, starboard advantage is always, you know, uh, having an advantage over your competitor is always a benefit. Um, and so we'll see what happens and what these competitors decide. As we see, Karl Mazlunka on starboard, Bart Lambrex on port, and the lead has closed up with Bart Lambrex having to go behind Karl Mazlunka. So Karl Mazlunka has taken another lead, and the lead changes just keeps changing. It keeps going on and on. Bart Lambrex, another big split. He's going for that right-hand side now to see if there is a sniff of breeze out there. And I, I don't even know who's going to come out on top of this here. I, it's just that close. Every maneuver that they do, it slows down and the distance um, between the competitors changes. So we'll see what happens when they come towards together here. Um, Bart Lambrex and Khan. Oh, and Khan just tacks in front of him, uh, creating that wind shadow for Bart Lambrex as they head towards this mark. Uh, they are oh. just barely on that ley line as Bart heads up and defends from from Khan, and now he's got the advantage going downwind to this bottom mark just before the finish. That was so close here, yeah. but Khan just left it too close, and um, and Bart just had more speed, so he just went closer and closer, and Khan was like, it's all falling apart for him. He picks up a boundary penalty for going too close, and it uh, looks like that'll be a race over. Bart Lambrex just textbook 
textbook had the starboard advantage and Khan Muzunka just left it way too close. And Bart Lambrex is going to be the champion. Wow, what a race. We're going 40, 48 knots. And Khan Muzunka is just left wondering what the hell just happened in that race. And what a race we had there. Massive congratulations to Bart Lambrex, who prevailed over his very tough competitor, Khan Muzunka. Very, very tight race there with multiple lead changes. Leo and Sarah, take us through the action. What happened there? Well, Shay, that was quite the interesting race. It was so back and forth, um, and it was so much fun to watch, and I'm sure the competitors had a blast. Um, but in the end, Bart took it, and, you know, it came down to just keeping a fast speed. It was so back and forth, and really, I think in the end, it was that final tack at that top mark that really solidified his lead um, going towards finish. That was epic. That was a classic, uh, great match race there. And, uh, Karma Zonka had an, had an awesome start off that um, off the start, had the best speed and held his lead all the way around. But at the end of the day, it was it was all match racing tactics for Bart Lambrex. He held the starboard advantage both times that top mark, and both times he he passed Karma Zonka there. So, um, you know, if I was Khan, I would have learned learned the second time. But you know, it's a little bit easier easier for us being in the commentator seat to call that. So. Uh, it was an awesome race for us to watch and uh, yeah, congrats to uh, Bart for taking out that overall win. Thank you so much to Leo and Sarah for guiding us through the action. Great job guys. And here we have our ESL GP Invitational winner, Bart Lambrix. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, obviously uh, quite happy with the win. It was a really, really exciting race. I think this is one of the most exciting uh, and closest races I've ever done. Uh, in e-sailing, so uh, congrats as well to the to uh, Khan to Havuk. Um, yeah, we we had a lot of lead changes in that match race, and it was uh, really really close up until the end. And um, yeah, it was it was good fun. Yeah, it was quite a battle there, and like you said, congratulations to to Khan. You know, he was definitely a formidable opponent. He certainly put up a fight. You guys have like the chillest rivalry in history, I think. You know, are we going to see some more of that? <laughs> oh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff, and congratulations again. So, as you can see, there is nothing quite like Cell GP. And if you'd like to get your hands on some official merchandise, don't forget the online store is open 24 7 at shopcellgp.com. And best of luck to Mike O'Donovan, aka Deja Vu, who will be representing Cell GP at the e Sailing World Championships. We'll have another ESL GP Invitational in December, but in the meantime, make sure you're following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And that does it from me. I've been your host, Shay Thompson. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to doing it all again soon. See you then.